Next, uh, we're going to connect the Wi-Fi module um, to the system. The way you'll start, this will probably be already connected. It'll take a few moments to catch up. As you can see, there are two lights inside, now three. There should be four lights lit when this Wi-Fi module it is communicating with the control. So since we just plugged this in, we want the control to acknowledge that this Wi-Fi device is in the formula. So if we hit memory one to start it, the control will now look for this control and now it found it. A fourth light just came on blinking. So with that said, um, let's take a look at the tools menu and make sure that this control or this device is really connected. So if we go to devices, if we go to next screen, all the way to the bottom, external remote, version 301 is what I'm using here. Your version may be different, but the key is to make sure it does say uh, a version number, not a no. So we know this is connected. Next is we'll go over the uh, five troubleshooting or five status lights, I should say. The uh, the bottom light, and I'm, I have the owner's manual right in front of me, and I suggest one has that with them just to uh, explain everything. But uh, the lowest light, bottoms up, uh, is a red light, and that is the power light that tells us that this Wi-Fi uh, wi module is seeing power. It's a red light, which will stay steady on. Uh, next light up is the um, 485 light, that's the... Uh, uh, it's a red light that uh, will blink, um, which is a communication light with the 450 controllers you already noticed. Um, next light up is the uh, yellow blinking light, that's the RS1. Um, it, it blinks when the microprocessor inside this Wi-Fi is operational, which it is right now. The uh, next light, um, which is out, that is a Wi-Fi light normally. It's a green light, which will illuminate and blink when it's configured to work with your home Wi-Fi network. We have not configured it yet, hence why it is off. And the last light, the green, the upper RS2 light, uh, that light stays steady uh, when the Wi-Fi is operational uh, between this module and the control. Um, it, it indicates that, that we're broadcasting a Wi-Fi signal. Um, so this is it for the lights. Next, we will be um, downloading this, the My Steamist app and uh, configuring the network. For this example, I will be using a Motorola Razer Droid. The app may be downloaded from Google Play for Droid devices or from iTunes on Apple products. First, we're going to go to Google Play. I already had My Steamist selected on top. And we're just going to install it. Before we open up the Steamist app, we the next step we need to do is connect our phone to the um, Wi-Fi module instead of our home network. So we actually have to log off our home network. We're going to go to uh, System Settings. We're going to go to Wi-Fi, and uh, my uh, my uh, my 450 is the uh, the name of the Steamist. Uh, uh, module and uh, you'll have different numbers after it but the my 450 is the key so we want to connect to it so right now just disconnect enough uh, where we were and we're gonna wait until it connects to the 450 module uh, 450 module Wi-Fi okay now that we're connected to the my 450 device or Wi-Fi module I should say um, now we're going to go to the Steamist, uh, My Steamist app. I will search for this Wi-Fi interface and I just found it. We have Steamist, we have the time. Uh, we're still not configured. This will not work yet. Uh, next step is we want to go to Tools, which is in the upper right corner. Next is the Network. Just need to give it a few moments to uh, uh, to link up, and we have a few. Uh, so we have to now select the Wi-Fi network. Before we do the next step, uh, please make sure you know your home uh, Wi-Fi uh, network name and your password for the next step, because now we have to 
put the Steamist my uh, Wi-Fi um, or Steamist uh, module onto your home network's Wi-Fi. So uh, we left a screen with uh, inside the Steamist app. There's a bunch of um, a bunch of networks around me. So sometimes you have to scroll down between screens. So on the bottom, my house Wi-Fi. That's the that's where we want to connect. And for uh, test purpose, we set up a password called Tech Support. So again, all you're doing is logging into your home network. So whatever your home password is, that's where you'll enter now. And we're gonna save. Next is we wanna take a look at the Wi-Fi module and if you notice, the lights changed. Um, the upper light is now solid green, that's our RS2 light. And so that tells us that this Wi-Fi module has been successfully connected to your home Wi-Fi. And the light below it um, is a, the Wi-Fi green light and it's blinking so it is configured to work with your home network. Next step is since our phone is not connected to our home network, now the next step is to exit the Steamist app. And now we're going to go to uh, Wi-Fi and our home Wi-Fi was Let's see our my house Wi-Fi and uh, the password we used was tech support. Again, this is just the password that I've used here for this sample video, but in your house you'll have a completely different name, obviously, and a password. So right now we're authenticating and shortly we should be connected. Next is we want a um, uh, now that the Wi-Fi is configured to our home network, now we need to configure or log back into our home Wi-Fi from our uh, portable device. So first we want to close this app. We want to back out of it completely. Okay, once we're back out of it on a Droid device, this is how you physically close the app or one of the ways. So now we want to connect back to our uh, home Wi-Fi network. In this case, we were uh, my house Wi-Fi, which my phone automatically connected to it, but if you need to, just make sure that you are connected. If it's not, connect there. Okay, and now we should be able to turn on my Steamist app. It'll search for the Wi-Fi for your home network. It found it, and it found um, the new Wi-Fi module. Now we should be able to turn the system on. So if I press memory one, uh, it turns the system on and it follows the settings we had pre-programmed in the DSC 450 control. And uh, this is a safety timer. In the event someone left the steam room door open, uh, the maximum time the steam will run is for, four, uh, for 15 minutes. Um, so it gives you 15 minutes to get to um, the inside of the steam room and to this control to acknowledge that yes you are present, you are there, you really do want to uh, take a steam bath. So once you make it to the control you would just uh, press memory one and now it continues the rest of your cycle. In this instance we had a 28 uh, or 30 minute uh, or 28 minute start time. And that's really it. If we wanted to shut it off or go back to the app and we shut it off and the screen goes back to off. Um, this completes this exercise.